The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Atlanta here at the OpenStack Summit. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm here with two great guests from HP, Monty Taylor, distinguished technologist, um, elected board on the individual board, on the board of directors of uh, Rackspace Foundation, I mean, OpenStack Foundation as an individual. Okay, and uh, Eileen Evans, Vice President, Deputy General Counsel with HP Cloud, who's also on the Board of Directors representing HP, the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Rackspace, OpenStack, it's all, all one, right? But uh, <laughs> Eileen, you're also on the Linux Board of Directors representing HP, um, and Monty, you're on the, as an individual on the board and an individual on the technical uh, committee. That's right. Um, that's awesome, and I think you guys have done is fantastic, and, and uh, Eileen, you were involved in drafting the, the, the bylaws of the original, uh, original eight members. Um, congratulations, I know you guys have done a great job, and uh, Thank you. what's it feel like to see all this? 4,200 people in there, double from Portland. Are you excited? Uh, the bumps were there along the way, smooth sailing, still a little rocky, give us the update. I find this very exciting, actually. I mean, I think it's, um, I was one of the original um, who helped found the, form, the, the foundation back in 2011, 2012 timeframe. So this is really exciting. My first OpenStack Summit was in 2011 that I attended. It was just a, a number, like hundreds of people, rather than here we have, you know, 42, 4,500 is, is the latest I'm hearing. But um, it's just significantly changed and expanded and grown. And I see all of the changes that have happened um, on the foundation side as well, which have been very exciting in moving the technology along and really supporting that through joint efforts with the foundation board as well as the technical committee and the PTLs. Monty, yeah. what's it like for you? I mean, you it's it's uh, very much the same. I mean, I was there in the in the very initial uh, days, uh, you know, before day zero as it as it goes, and to see this many people in this large of a place doing this is, is kind of, it's kind of crazy. We all were in the same room in the, what, Marriott or whatever it was in Austin uh, back in, back in 11, uh, 2011, 2010 actually, I think we had a meeting. Yeah, 2010. Yeah, I remember in the, in the 80s when I was in uh, getting my computer science degree, there was the computer issues being born by the people, young kids, right? Young Bill yeah. Gates and Steve Jobs were young and, and the same thing's happening here and industry's being yeah. built, right? And, and it's fun for me to watch because you know, I've been watching you guys progress, but you guys are actually doing it. So I gotta, I gotta say congratulations, uh, great stuff. Um, but tell me about what happened last night, because I'm trying to get to, the, get, get to this. So there's a meeting <laughs> between the technical committee and the board of directors last night. It wasn't necessarily a secret meeting, but apparently it was secret because not everyone can get invited to that. So Monty, what happened? I mean, what, it's, you know, It was actually, it's, it's reasonably historic. It's the first time we've ever done it. Uh, we've talked about doing it uh, a, a whole bunch um, since, since the beginning, but it's, it's kind of hard. We have 24 members on the board of directors and we have 13 members on the technical committee. So finding a time when 37 people can, am I doing the math right? Yeah. You're doing it right. Finding uh, find a time when 37 people can all get together in the same room, all of whom are massively busy people, is not it's it's not a it's not a day-to-day -day, uh, type of thing. So um, so we we sat down. Um, we've been we've been trying to, to sort out some things with the the Def Core committee, trying to figure out how it is that we present OpenStack to the to the world, how we present uh, something that we can. We can tell users and consumers, listen, you can really count on on these pieces. And there's there's trademark, there's there's business implications of that. Uh, you know, there's a there's sort of a, a uh, an agreement we're making with our users. Listen, this is what it, how it's going to work. And there's there's obviously technical ramifications of that. So it's it's not really a thing that sits just on the board or just on the technical committee uh, in terms of their purview. It it's it really has to be a collaboration between. Both of them, which means you've got to get business and technical people in the same room uh, and get them to, you know, talk. Uh, and it actually went really well. It, was, well, it went, it went uh, just smashingly well. One of the one of the challenges for me doing the cube is whatever I say gets recorded. <laughs> 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 and you know, and when OpenStack started, I'm a big fan. I remember when Rackspace started, I, you know, I loved it. And then I was very critical of OpenStack at the beginning because I'm like, okay, it's a land grab. It became cloud washing 101. Just put OpenStack on it. It felt like a marketing program, not a community. And, and so we were, a lot of people were vocal, including myself. And then all of a sudden it became contribute with code. 
Yeah. And then it shifted to value. So I want to talk yeah. specifically about the meeting last night and what was the, what was the vibe? I mean, right now you get a lot of people excited. Yeah. Uh, people are worried that you know there's been some standards in the past. Eileen, you know, <laughs> we've seen this movie before in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. You know, strategy: the big vendors come in, stall, Six. land grab, and throw everyone else out to the side. I think uh, the vibe they're worried was about great. that. That's what everyone's worried about. Yeah. Yeah, but if, uh, the vibe in the meeting yesterday, I think, was great. And I think what also uh, was very clear was it, we definitely needed that communication between the board and the technical right. committee. And that I think by setting aside the time to meet in person, and again, everyone made it a priority to to be there. On on a Sunday, in you know, in person, meet with folks. on Mother's Day. On Mother's, Mother's Day, Day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my mom on was Mother's really Day. excited about that. <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, my kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but I think the, the great thing is, though, everyone came to the meeting, you know, fully immersed, um, focused on the issues at hand. And in addition, I think what was very clear was that we, you know, we have some work to do, into you know, because there are so many decisions with this community that, are, that touch upon both technical and business issues. So we recognize that there really is a significant overlap between the technical committee, the board, and to work more closely together. We've, you know, came away with some specific actions as well to, you know, have closer collaboration and we're going to continue to do this in-person meeting uh, the day before the summit uh, in Paris as well. Yeah. What are the, Monty, what are the threshold issues right now on the technical side? We had a big API debate with Randy Baez in San Francisco a few months ago. Oh, very that act, fun. Very active. <laughs> I, got to, I can pull up some of the conversations. <laughs> well, certainly Randy, Randy's there, it'd be controversial. Yeah. Um, but there wasn't many months, but it was, it was a healthy debate. What are the debate points right now? What are the thresholds? Um, a lot of the debate uh, on the on the technical side has to do with with how we uh, how we how we scale this thing going forward. It obviously works now. People are using it in, in production all over the place. Um, so we've 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 been we've been very successful very early on, and so now that we've got people running this in production pretty much everywhere, we've got to we've got to deal with with growing it and and continuing to move it forward in a way that doesn't uh, that doesn't put people in a bad position. Um, that allows people to, to upgrade uh, in, a, in a in a sane way, um, and allows us to, to sort of keep keep scaling it out without um, to continue to, to meet the business needs of the people who are using it without all of a sudden throwing the the technical the technical community under the under the bus, as it were. So we want to we want to grow both of those um, sort of in concert moving forward, and that's that's a that's a tricky thing to do when you get this many people. As you said, in the past it, it turns into land grabs by people, uh, and we've been very careful to 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 keep away from. Uh, from doing that to try and do everything we can to make sure that it's always a level playing field for everybody who's coming in to, to participate in, in the project. What so, do you guys think, Eileen, you mentioned the board has known each other. Is there a good, good working relationship and trust there? I think so. I think yeah. there's actually excellent working relationships amongst the board. And one of the things that um, I think has helped to create that is the fact that back in 2011 and 2012, that's when a number of us got to know one another. So if I look at the gold and platinum members on the board, by and large, it's the same individuals that were there in 2011, 2012. So at that time, we were working through some, you know, fairly difficult issues in terms of, you know, looking at things like how are we going to structure this, how are we going to create this. In many ways, it was fairly new to what we were doing, and we also wanted to make sure we maintained things like technical meritocracy, the things that worked really, really well in the OpenStack Foundation we, and the OpenStack project. We didn't want to break those, so we, I think, we worked through a number of really significant issues together. So that way, when we actually formed and launched the board in September 2012, we'd already gotten to know each other fairly well. And you're and, the only woman on the board. I am, yes. I want to make sure yes. I get that on. Yes. And are you the only woman on the Linux board too? Yes. Okay, <laughs> history. Um, what, so I want to ask you a question around, um, uh, can the community grow and win without a leader? The debate we had on our crowd chat earlier. Yeah. Um, it takes a leader sometimes, and Linux that certainly was uh, IBM, they put some money down that, and you guys also did a lot of work around Linux, and remember the SEO uh, indemnification, yeah. you guys did that, so I'm sorry about, sorry about that. Um, same kind of thing now, you're seeing IBM here, you're seeing HP, you guys are not small companies, you have a lot of muscle, a lot of customers, a lot of enterprise customers. Can you guys, can OpenStack win with the community, or does there have to be some leaders in there? I think, I think it has to win with the community. I think, I think that that's actually a, a giant part of what makes us special and, and what, makes us, uh, what makes us significant in the, in the space. We're trying to do something a little bit different. You know, uh, a lot of times in the past you've had you know, the, the sort of benevolent dictator, as they, as they like to call it. Um, and, and that means that ultimately all of those are, are sort of top-down control structures in, in, in some way to some degree. And so the, the question really, one of the questions here is, can we actually come together as a, as a group of equals, as a group of collaborators, work together uh, without anybody being particularly in the position of telling somebody else, this is what you're going to do. Um, and so far it's working really well. I mean, we've, we've got multiple public clouds running on this stuff. We've, 
grown from a, a hundred something to 4,500. We had, you know, we've got over 2,000 uh, contributors on the technical side, an uh, average of 466 a month currently. Um, and they're all coming in and, and, and landing giant amounts of code um, uh, to, together without there being that sort of top-down command construct, control well, structure. If you Drill down on that. Yeah. So some people say, you know, OpenStack is a mindset, you gotta think about it in a certain way. It's yeah. not a product, it's a platform. That's been a consistent message we hear. Can you just parse that a little further? What does that mean? It's not a product, it's a platform. It's it's a platform. I think that it's it's and, and who's thinking of and what's the what's wrong with thinking about it as a product? You can't I actually I actually don't think that I don't think you can't think of it as a product. I think that OpenStack wants to think of itself as a project as, as somebody that, that ships something. But a lot of times when you say product, you think of something with maybe uh, maybe a, a specific commercial interest behind it. You think this is going to be a thing I'm going to go buy or something like that. Uh, we want you to be able to consume OpenStack directly from us. We also want you know, HP and, and IBM and Piston and Nebula and all of these guys to be able to, to sell products based on that, that are built with that. So on the platform perspective, um, it's, it's a thing that isn't just what it is, it's also the thing that people can use to to, to build the product that they want to they want to build, and and ultimately then it wants to become a, a, a meta platform really because we want to have multiple clouds out there so that we've got an ecosystem of clouds so that our the ultimate end users of these can can take their their workloads, can take their applications and run them at HP, can run them at Rackspace, can run them at IBM, can run them at a local pri private cloud. Um, and have that be something that they that they can actually do in the same way that we can do with laptops today. I can I can buy a laptop from multiple people. Of course, I would only ever buy them from HP, but I could in theory buy them from somebody we else. Gotta, we had to put thing. the little cube stickers on our laptops because we go to HP Discover. They didn't like the Macs. No, I'm sure. Laptop, I'm sure. I'm sure they did not. <laughs> <laughs> We're independent media, so you know they end up bringing our laptops. Uh, I want to get you. Talk about the Linux point you raised yeah. on the Linux indemnity. Yeah. So I think that's that's another important piece here is HP was the first um, large enterprise company to offer an indemnity around Linux, and this was you know, a number of years ago. And I think HP, we're stepping up and doing the same thing with OpenStack. We're providing you know, an indemnity for OpenStack, and that's something that you know, we announced last week in conjunction with HP Helion on OpenStack. And I think that's another important piece here is that you know, we are standing behind the open source technology. Um, were you the first ones to do it in OpenStack? Not the first, but I think we're the first large enterprise to do it, so I'd say yes. IBM says they've done it before you guys. I'm not aware of that, but we're the first, my understanding is we're the first large enterprise. Okay, we'll have to just clarify that, we'll have to clarify that. Yes. All right, so guys, well, I want to ask you about the, the what needs to get done for the community. I mean, you've, been, you've seen this movie before, you've been involved in open source communities, Monty yep. yourself included. What does OpenStack need to do from this point forward, the foundation set, yep. to scale up this organization, this community? from a legal, technical, community outreach, what, what do they need to do? We'll start with that again. I, well, I mean, I think there are some tactical things that we need to accomplish. I mean, what Troy mentioned today in his keynote was we're working on the Dev Core Committee, and both Monty and I are involved in the Dev Core and all the work that's being done there. Um, what, what comes out of that, though, as well, is what Troy mentioned as well, which was he, we need to have some changes to the bylaws. And so once the Dev Core con con you know, completes the work that they're doing, we're going to have some work as well as making certain changes to the trademark policy so that they conform to the way that we're adjusting. Because again, I think one of the things is the project has grown significantly. So if we look at the way core technology in OpenStack is defined right now, um, it, it was great when we created the bylaws back in 2012, but I think we recognize we need to make some adjustments. So I think one of the key things I think that's important is that we continue to listen to the community and we continue to listen to the constituencies to try to make sure we're adaptable and really make that change rapidly. Yeah, we have to, we have to find the balance uh, a lot of so much of what we're doing with the, with as many participants as we have is, is about finding balances of uh, of the different interests of the people and so this is one of the things we've been working uh, working on as it relates to the trademark policy and that it's really important for our users that we have a trademark that means something so that the so that the a, a person who consumes a thing that's called OpenStack is actually a thing they can technically count on to be of a, of a certain uh, a certain quality or, or, or has a certain set of capabilities, we don't want to go too far with that and get really restrictive and not let, not let companies sort of build out the ecosystem. And we don't want to be too lax with that um, so that it's, it's meaningless. Um, same thing with, uh, with, with bringing things into the project. We're growing on the technical side uh, by leaps and bounds. We want to still be able to be a player in the, in the greater ecosystem. We want to be able to, to interact with, with other people like Cloud Foundry 
Um, but at the same time, we, we, we need to be able to service the people who want to, to consume things from OpenStack. So it's, a, it's all about a balancing act. All right, share the folks out there. I want to get the HP word in there because I know that there's some changes at HP. Um, Bethany Mayer's in there um, and Martin Fink is now running it. People don't look at HP as a big open source company, but, but there's a lot of action in there. Talk about the experience you guys have and, and maybe, maybe silence some of the skeptics out there around the experience with open source. Sure, including yeah. Including your, your role, <laughs> Linux is pretty yes. open. Yes, absolutely. So Martin Fink, um, I, I think it's, he was our first VP of open source at HP. He actually wrote a book on open source. Um, it was published about 10 years ago. And it's um, the business and economics of Linux and open source. And to be honest, I, I reread the book recently a couple times, and there's, there are things that are in there that are so, so true today as they were 10 years ago. It's interesting how history repeats itself. And I find it incredibly helpful, some of the key points um, in that book. Uh, but I think in in addition, Martin, because he's got this deep historical knowledge and experience within open source, um, he is uniquely qualified and positioned because he's now running HP Cloud to be in that leadership position and helping us drive forward because our cloud um, portfolio is based on the OpenStack technology. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's, it's been fantastic having him uh, at, the, at the helm of the cloud group. He brings that, uh, that experience uh, in, in both business and open source to the table, which is, which is extremely important because mm -hmm. If you don't have that experience, you start to think that you need to you need to poke at things more. And and he's got the confidence to be able to say, listen, we're doing OpenStack, we're in, we're all in on it. And so that means we're going to go and we're going to be good, you know, good participants and good members of that community to drive it forward appropriately. And that and that actually isn't at odds with uh, building a business around it. In fact, it's it's core to building a successful business around it. If you don't do that, then you're undercutting the thing that you're saying you're building a business on. So it's, it's, been a, it's been a real boon to have guys, them. Thanks there. for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Uh, we're cut for time here, I know you guys got to go too, but I'd like to get, give you guys both the final word. We'll start with Eileen. Share with the folks out there in your own words, why is this point in time so unique and so exciting from a technology perspective? What's going on in, this year that it makes it so compelling? I think with, with the, the shift in technology in the industry, I think we're at that really interesting inflection point. Um, and I think cloud is, I, I still think cloud is in its very early days. So I think we're, we're really prime and set up for success to really um, help grow this and grow this in a way that it's open, that's interoperable, that's all of those things that are so important to the entire industry. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that we're, we're at a very similar place as we were at, at, uh, at when the, at, with the invention of the PC. Um, right before that, it was extremely difficult for uh, anybody to get their hands on a computer. You know, there were the famous quotes about like, oh, there's really only going to be four computers and the need for four computers in the world. And once we had the PC come out, um, you saw the explosion of, uh, of the tech industry around that and, and what that did for, for, for forming the industry. Now we're at a place where to get a new computer, I, I, I click a couple buttons on a web page or I make a, a couple API calls and I have a computer right now. I mean, that, that's, it's, it's the same sea change um, that, that we had with the, with the original PC invention. So I think that there, we can only begin to imagine what applications we're going to see of that uh, in the next couple of years. Monty Taylor and Eileen Evans are both on the board of directors and Monty also on the technical committee of OpenStack Foundation. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you.